They also studied the way gay and straight people talk. Hi, I like Marvel Comics. Sounds straight to me. And is straight. Hi, I like DC Comics. Gay. Hey everybody, this is Perch. I want to talk about gay characters in comic books, and in particular, how they're written. Because the challenge is, if I think about, if you're a long time, put this way, if you're a long time comic reader, um, and you read comics during the 80s and 90s, there were certainly gay characters back in that time period. Um, but they, they were written kind of just like the other superheroes or the other characters. Um, they, in fact, you know, a lot of the characters were written to be unashamed of who they were, um, particularly once they'd come out. And then they just, they, they were, they were characters. In fact, Peter David had a number of uh, gay characters during his runs and he, they kind of the whole comic bent over backwards to say, you know, we're really no different from anyone else. We're gay and that's it. You know, there, there wasn't any desire to kind of go into kind of weird stereotypes. And today comics lean into that quite heavily now i'm conscious of the fact that you know people are like ah oh, you just want all the comics to go back to the 80s I, I don't there's actually a lot of really good comics out there but there's some writing techniques or there's some style choices that certainly were better uh, before and it's not just comics by the way it's games it's movies it's everything to kind of illustrate this point i'm going to give you two examples and both of them are are not from comics but it'll, it'll give you a sense of how comics are following this, uh, you know, this whole path. So first, um, you know, I, I bought Spider-Man two and I saw all the videos like, Oh, it's gone. woke." I, you know, they're, they're going on and on about, uh, how severely, um, woke the big, the game is. And for me, I, I, you know, I bought this thinking, this is likely people are reacting the earlier other Spider-Man games you had, uh, some city blocks, they had like the pride flag and you had other things just kind of sewn into the game. It always seemed odd because like you're swinging around. It's not like the pride flag was displayed in a area where it made sense. It's like, you know, I'm climbing up city hall. Here's a pride flag. But, but it didn't, it just didn't, um, this stuff was like painted on the wall halfway up the building. I, it just didn't make a lot of sense if you're thinking about where this would exist in the real world. But regardless, and you know, you might say, oh, wait a minute, it's a superhero game. Why does it have to be the real world? It doesn't, except Spider-Man kind of prides itself on being that, this accurate representation of New York. Anyway, so I'm playing this game, and I'm my belief is that a lot of this uh, kind of breathless overreaction, everything is woke crowd has gotten to it, because that's certainly how it felt. It didn't feel like a legit criticism. It felt like uh, a bunch of people who were, you know, just just seeing the boogeyman everywhere. And a, a couple things happened in the game. The first is, you know, you, you save somebody from Sandman and you go deliver them to the hospital. And then this, this is kind of a recurring theme in the game. You're, you're frequently, you know, something goes on and you're taking somebody to a hospital. There's a fireworks mission where this happens. Uh, you carry J. Jonah Jameson at one point. Um, but anyway, you're, you're, you're hauling these characters off to the hospital and swinging them around. And their bodies are like flopping everywhere, indicating that you'd, you'd easily snap the neck just swinging around town with these people hanging off your back. But but anyway, when you get there, there is often a, oh, I, I hope my boyfriend's going to be okay, this guy you're carrying. And it's just, uh, and then sometimes a character will start talking about the boyfriend. And it's fine that the character has a boyfriend, but what's odd about it is that they're talking about it at all. You know, you, you're... If you get, I've, I've used this example before in my videos. If you take away the gay aspect of the character and you just had it as straight, it would still sound really weird. One of the characters is like, um, ah, we was going to have a romantic night, candles and everything, and we were going to cuddle. Just me and my boyfriend. And Spider Man is like swinging around the city, getting him to a hospital. And if you think like the if the character has a girlfriend and is saying this, like, again, Spider-Man is swinging him to a hospital. And he's like, I'm going to cuddle with my girlfriend tonight. Spider-Man's going to be like, uh, okay. You know, that that's that's a little, uh, it, it's just weird. The dialogue sticks out. And, and another point in the game, you go on a mission where uh, a, a boy is trying to ask another boy out. 
to Homecoming. And the characters are written just silly, like, like a, again, a parody of what a gay person is like. Not like anything in real life. And, and if you compare it again to comics, you know, from, from decades ago, you had this desire to say, hey, you know, they're just people like any other person. But in this game, it is, you know, you would, if this was set 20 years ago, if you got your hands on Spider-Man 2 20 years ago and you're playing this, you would think that the creators actively hate gay people because they're they're making them parodies of themselves. It's not it's not built out of respect. It's not built in a way that kind of showcases people. It, it's built in a in living color Saturday Night Live kind of format where the gay is over the top gay, and it just just you know I, you you want you I'm playing this stuff and I'm like. Okay, the, the the person who inserted this is terrible at their job because it's it just plays off as I mean I don't know it plays off like a bunch of straight people wanting to uh, I don't know get get a like on Twitter and so they're coming up with the most goofy possible setting in order for them to say see we included LGBTQ themes into our game but it doesn't. Again, it, it none of it plays real. It plays like cruelty. And kind of throughout the game, there's lots of little nods in, in this whole thing. And, and a lot of it just comes off as, as strange. Miles Morales has a, um, a somebody he'd like to have as a girlfriend, and she's deaf. And so doing sign language, you know, to communicate. And it's, it's again, it's it's fine. If you played the previous games, you're, you know, you're, you're down with what is happening here. And you kind of understand the, the nature of his character. But what doesn't make sense is at times you're in a big school setting with a bunch of other people. And when you're in that setting, you have people doing sign language. And a lot of people doing sign language. There's a scene where the principal's talking and you've got four people doing sign language uh, to communicate, like the translators, to communicate to the student body. But this is like more people than when a governor talks or when somebody gives a speech in a crowd. It's just, the stuff goes several steps further than what makes any actual sense. And it, again, it, it comes off like you're making fun of it, not like it's, uh, it's respectful. And so that, that's, you know, you're, you're playing this game and, and you constantly have that. And what I'm thinking about is a lot of characters in comics, if you think about the pride issue, if you think about kind of that, uh, trans, uh, superhero team that was in, uh, like D man, I think was, uh, leading it. For me, it's just an LGBTQ. I, I don't. I don't recall if it was a specific trans group, an LGBTQ group. I, I don't know. But anyway, um, all the char the, you know, the characters are written. Again, it's such an over the top, ridiculous way that you, you know you're, you're honestly wondering if it's some troll who's writing this with the goal of intentionally making fun of gay people because that's how it reads. Again, it doesn't read respectful it reads like a parody so i said there's one other example i give you um i went to watch ghostbusters 2 with the uh with the family and i was going to do a whole comment on this and i realized hey this is a comic channel not necessarily a movie review channel so i review a movie that has uh, nothing to do with comics um but in this movie uh phoebe the uh the younger girl in it uh the daughter is is you know, they never come out and say, hey, you know, she's a lesbian. But they put her in scenarios where again, the writers, it feels like the writers are trying to dance around the fact they would like to release this in other countries. And so they're going to uh, intentionally, you know, she's gay in the movie. Like the movie doesn't work if she's not gay in certain scenes. Because um, does she does just a, a very stupid thing in the movie. And then also that puts everybody in danger, uh, but also just kind of the dialogue, the every, everything that's there. You have to keep telling yourself, Hey, this is a 15 year old girl who is, um, apparently just running around the town fighting ghosts and, you know, driving things and causing property damage. It, it like the, the movie is odd in a lot of ways, but, it's, you know, the inclusion of this character being a lesbian is the part that's a little weird because it it's it's there for 
really no point whatsoever. The girl is, uh, I mean, the, from where the girl meets uh, the the ghost, the lesbian ghost, um, out in a, a you know a ba- you know Central Park park at like twelve o'clock at night. I just like I you know I I'm trying not to spoil the movie, but there's parts of this that are just so profoundly weird, and it breaks the the moment of the scene and the character and everything else that you're wondering why why you did this, and again for comics. When they introduce gay comics or gay characters into the comics, it's it's often in a way that just makes absolutely no sense. You take uh, Betsy Braddock and uh, Rachel Summers, and you know you, you have to kind of ignore the fact that one, this relationship sprouted out really over nowhere, and some of the characters are like, hey, we decided we're gay for each other, and it just there there was not you know Teeny Howard did not you know tease and lead this up in any kind of your way. And on top of this, uh, you know, you do have Rachel Summers in the future. We've seen that future. She's married to Franklin Richards or dating. I, I don't know. But but anyway, it, it again, it, it doesn't match any of the continuity. You didn't put any effort into why it's different. And that and that's, you know, the problem with this Ghostbusters film as well is, you know, the character, there's there's no background. There's no lead up. There's no hint of any of this we're in the movie supposed to believe this character is super smart and uh intelligent and i mean a plot point in the film is that she wants to go out and hunt ghosts and you know be a grown-up and you know do this both of the kids do they decide to give both the same plot arc um but in this case you know we're, we're supposed to learn that she's competent knows what she's doing and instead we give her a bizarre storyline that you know, has no, you know, previous background into her character. And on top of that, um, does the opposite of make her look smart. It's, it makes her look very, very dumb. This entire kind of crush, whatever was happening there. It, it's all just weird. And I'll get, give you one more point from that movie that I think also relates to the comics. It's a desire to fast forward to moments that are supposed to matter. So in this case, you know, I, again, this probably gets into spoiling this movie quite a bit. Um, the character who has this, this romance, we're supposed to believe that after a few scenes, and I'm talking, I, I don't know, maybe has spent an hour with this other ghost, less. I mean, at screen time, we get maybe 10 minutes. But this is a romance for the ages. It's, it's, sudden, it's portrayed like, uh, you know, toward the end of the film, that this is the, you know, the love of the character's life. And, you know, they're, they're going to be with each other till infinity. And it's the the entire thing is just, there, there's no, there's no build to this moment. You're just meant to believe that, Hey, this happened. And now it is, um, it is kind of the best relationship, the entire universe. And that's, again, a problem with comics is, you know, they're trying to make up for lost time where you had a lot of straight couples. And, you know, you know, men connecting with women and other things, Spider-Man's relationship with Mary Jane, all these different moments. And so when they introduce LGBTQ characters into the comics, when they introduce gay characters into the comics, it's like they want to claim that 30-year history of what uh, a relationship is like. It's like, well, you know, Captain America's had Sharon Carter for a long time, and that's been a big romance, so, uh, you know, we need to do something similar. We need to we're gonna we're gonna make this couple go from zero to you know in you know one of the best relationships of all time you know there are a lot of comics particularly the 90s and 2000s with mystique and mystique is shown pretty much sleeping around with lots of different men in in her own comic in the comic she was in with creed in x factor and other things she was in she's shown as this and she's shown as having a dear friend in irene in destiny and this is probably one of the, the longest relationships, but it's portrayed as a friendship. And then suddenly, over the course of, you know, a couple months, it is no longer a friendship. It is, you know, she is willing to burn down all of mutantdom to get her, her wife back. It's, it's, you know, I like Wiccan and Hulkling as a relationship. I think that then they started out right, they portrayed it well and everything else. That doesn't escape the fact that they did want to go from 
zero to completely uh, married one of the best couples in the entire Marvel universe in no time. Now, there's nothing wrong with a speed wedding, I guess, but it it's at the expense of the character. And I guess in all the things I'm saying, that's that's the problem. When you combine, you know, parodies of characters, characters who have traits that are, you know, again, what comedians would make fun of a gay person being as the core personality. And you have the characters do things that are completely out of character, out of storyline in order to make this work, in order to get the pieces in the right place for your, your tale. And you speed it up as fast as humanly possible because you want to make sure you have a, a gay relationship that's uh, fully baked. You know, that's just as big and just as committed as Reed and Sue, even though that relationship's had 60 years to tell its story. That's the problem. And again, all this really is at the expense of gay characters. Notice in this video, because people write me like, ah, you're a bigot. You know, so they'll say things like, uh, well, you don't want gay characters. To the contrary. You know, it's gay characters are fine. But they they kind of, they deserve a story and a care and a plot and a character, you know, an actual rounded character as much as anyone else, don't they? Why is it that they get the speed run of a personality that, you know, it, it doesn't land? I mean, again, it's not fair to the character. The character is also a fictional character. So, you know, fair or unfair, it's, there's still fiction. But for the, you know, the readers, if you're trying to actually cultivate an LGBTQ audience, do you think they like this? Do you think they like stories where their characters are, you know, two dimensional cutouts and, you know, all have largely the same personality and, uh, whether they're written in a stronger way, they, they quickly resort to the worst tropes, you know, is that, is that helpful? I mean, I don't think any of that makes comics better. It doesn't make the characters better. You need to actually put the work in like you would any other character. Anyway, what do you know? What do you, what do you know? What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe, of course. And thanks for listening.